Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to be a good computer programmer. But there's a catch because I generated this entire article, or sorry, this entire presentation using an AI. So I'm using this Prezi tool, and it created this presentation for me. Now, I haven't seen any of it at all, so I'm just going to walk through it and we'll see how good it actually is at teaching us how to be a good programmer. So, First, we're gonna start off with some fundamental skills. Remember, I haven't seen this yet, so I'm gonna to try to like teach it and critique it at the same time. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to start off with problem solving. Effective problem solving involves identifying issues and breaking them down into manageable parts. I think that's actually true. One of the main skills in computer programming is taking a big problem and being able to break it up into smaller problems, but then you need to be able to build those smaller problems back up to you know, solve the main problem, right? And that's where things like functions, methods, object-oriented programming, functional programming, all of these different like programming paradigms that have popped up over the years, those are sort of attempts at making solving these you know big abstract problems a little bit easier. And I think it is like a Rubik's cube. A lot of times you have to sort of be able to rotate and you know match things up correctly. Like for me. A lot of times I'll write a piece of code and then I'll get it to work and then I'll completely refactor the whole thing because I don't like the way that the code looks. I'll refactor it again, 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 like you keep going over it until you find just the right amount of, you know, just the right amount of modularity, just the right functions, just the right way of kind of putting it together. So I think this is pretty good and it develops solutions that efficiently address complex challenges. Wow, that's very, very well put. So the other thing to being a good programmer is algorithm design. And it's really about creating step-by-step -step procedures to solve specific problems. I love how general this is. You can tell it was generated by an AI, but that's true as well. So if we think about like modularity and problem solving, the core of that is the algorithm. So before we kind of talked about how you have a bunch of different functions and we have to combine them together in the right way, but then what's actually going on in those functions? That's where these algorithms come in. And a lot of times I think there is a disparity between the way the software is designed versus the actual algorithms themselves. Like a lot of times you'll have the algorithm down pat, but then you have to be able to integrate the algorithm into the you know overall solution in a good way. So you have to kind of combine those things. And here it says that well-structured algorithms lead to optimized performance and reliability. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Um, I had a video on testing a few days ago, and one of the things that's really important with testing is performance. And a lot of times with an algorithm, that's where the performance test is gonna come in. So you'll have like three or four lines of code and those are the lines of code that are holding everything up in an application that has like a million lines, right? So it's those small little algorithms and it's a lot of times like, you know, if you can optimize just that four or five line algorithm and, and it can move really fast, then uh, it makes a difference in the application. Another thing as well is with algorithms is like recursion. So rec recursive code and a lot of times if you're dealing with like trees or you know more complex data structures, uh, recursion comes into play. That's an area where algorithms are important like writing recursive algorithms and those are notoriously just horrendous to write tests for. All right, so let's see what the next step is in being a good programmer. Uh, data structures are crucial for organizing and storing data. Yeah, that's true. I've been doing a couple of data structures tutorials. And again, this kind of goes, it's like the other side of algorithms. So if the algorithm is like the engine, then the data structure is sort of the car, right? It's like the car is what everyone sees. It's what has to do with all like the aerodynamics and everything. Um, and then the, the algorithm is like the engine that's kind of driving everything. So data structures are important, but a lot of times, you know, some simple data structures like a tree or a hash or an array, it's really all you need. So I think with data structures, a lot of times less is more, you know, you don't want to overcomplicate things, but the right data structure for the right job is, is always good. All right. So another thing is programming language proficiency. So proficiency in programming languages is, is essential. So you need to master languages like Python, Java, C++. Yeah, I think this is a big one. I'm never a big proponent of like, 
I don't think that the programming language is that important specifically, but what is important is the community support for the language, the types of documentation that are available, and then also like the types of libraries that are available. So a lot of times with a programming language, it's not so much about the syntax, it's not so much about like the look and the feel of the language, it's more about like what's already been written in that language, you know, what legacy system from 15 years ago is, is written in it, and that tends to be like why we pick things. So for example, with something like Python, really good for data science, it's nothing to do with Python syntax. It's nothing to do with Python, you know, the way that it's written. It's not even really that fast of a language, um, but it's just that a lot of good libraries and code have been written for Python to do data science and it's all, it can all, you know, run in C and a lot, there's a lot of things with Python that make it good, but um, you know, it's more about like the sort of infrastructure around the language than it is about like the syntax or whatever. Okay, so those are the essential skills. Now, I think there might be a couple more. Yeah, here we go. Development practices. Oh, there's a lot more here to do. Okay, so the code quality. Yes, we need good code quality. Um, and I think this actually goes more uh, back into the whatever the slide was with the Rubik's Cube, like the way that you design the code like the how modular it is the, the the way that you've like kept up with refactoring over the years that that has a big a big impact on being a good programmer so a lot of times like if you're a good programmer it's because the programmers that came before you were also good like if there's good patterns and there's good practices in the code base then you're going to be you know, kind of more likely to use those good patterns and practices yourself. Whereas if you're dealing with some spaghetti code legacy system, then you're probably just adding some more spaghetti code unless your job is to clean it up. Okay, and then we're talking about version control. So yeah, version control, this is a way of tracking, you know, who does what, right? It's like if I upload something or I push a piece of code into the code base and then someone else does and then someone else does and then the code base breaks, how do we figure out who we're going to fire or who we're going to blame, right? That's version control. It's also too, if I make a mistake in the code or, you know, I want to go back to a previous state that the code has been in, that's where version control comes in. So yeah, I think having a good knowledge of a version control system like Git or something like that makes a big difference. Testing and debugging. Yeah, so regular testing, and I actually just did a video on software testing, and I think before we were talking about performance tests, but if you don't have tests in your code base, how do you know that when you add new code, it doesn't break old stuff? And the more code that you add to a code base, the more things you're gonna have to keep checking over and over again. So this is definitely important. Um, and there's a couple of different types of tests. Unit tests are like, you're testing a function. Integration tests would be like you're testing big parts of a system together. Performance tests, you're testing for like how fast things happen. Stress testing, you're just gonna throw the kitchen sink at everything. So tests are very important. And the more you can automate that process, uh, the better it is. But the, the more complicated the thing you're testing, the harder it is to automate. And then finally, actually, I don't know if this is finally, but there's documentation. So comprehensive documentation enhances code usability and maintenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, this kind of looks like uh, documentation. I think actually tests are a really good form of documentation. So I tend to think of uh, a good suite of tests as a, a way of documenting a code base. And that's why when you're writing tests, you want to write tests that kind of make sense at a high level. You don't want to get too into the nitty gritty. Like you don't want the tests to have too much logic in them. I think the tests should be modular. They should be repetitive and they should just tell you exactly what they're doing and not be like, because a lot of times companies will, they're trying to get like 100% test coverage. You know, unless you're building like the NASA uh, rover or like some banking system, a lot of times like a good suite of tests that just test kind of like the happy paths and then a little bit of the edge cases, as long as they're easy to maintain, it can, it can serve as a good form of documentation. Okay, so I don't know if that's it. Oh, continuous learning. Wow, we have a lot more to go here. Okay, so maybe we can speed through this last part. Uh, online resources. Yeah, so you got to keep your skills up. That's like Draft Academy. Hello. Uh, community engagement, getting involved with the community. Definitely love that. And updated technologies. Yeah, so I think, actually, I think the airline systems, like all the software that runs airlines and actually the airline radar systems. I saw this on the news the other day. 
they're running on software that's from like the 80s or something like they're running on software that has just never ever been updated and and they're running into serious issues because it's the 21st century and now we have like massive files we have the internet we have all these things and like a lot of the software was built before those uh, systems were even in place so yeah you got to keep the technology updated and then going to conferences and workshops yeah definitely that sounds good to me all right so okay so there's more <laughs> yeah collaboration you got to collaborate with people you got to get those communication skills where are all these images coming from by the way i hope these aren't uh like copyrighted time management successful programmers prioritize time management that's true and then ethical practices yeah we got to be ethical okay you can't be uh cutting any corners when you're going to be a good developer all right so it looks like that's the entire prezi uh so yeah now you know how to be a good programmer i agree with pretty much all of this and it's definitely from an ai because it's super generic but you got my little uh comments on it so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and uh a comment and otherwise i'll see you in the next one